Pumpkin Blister card, which I really like because of its simplicity. The composition isn't all over the place, and the blister perfectly houses the figure and what he comes with. Running throughout the card is the design which is most associated with the opening title sequence and commercials for the show. I couldn't ask for anything more, and I love it! On the blister, we get the sticker with the figure name and a really cool photo of Walt. Oh, Brian Cranston, you're so dreamy in that man crush type of way. On the back is a full photo displaying the figure and some blurbs advertising other merchandise for the series. This is a figure I'd really enjoy keeping on the card, but for two reasons, I'm going to open them. First, I don't think the blister is attached to the card very well. All of the figures on the peg had tape around the bubble, which I think Mezco intended on, and many of them I saw in the store looked as if they were about to detach due to the subpar glue job. The second is the bubble around the figure's face. It's specifically form-fitted to it, and because of that, it obscures it while in the package. All right, time to pull them out! This is a spot-on representation of Walt in his Heisenberg persona. The sculpting on him is amazingly done. The texturing and folds to his clothes are wonderfully sculpted, adding some great realism to the figure. While he looks quite imposing in his hat and sunglasses, Mezco went ahead and made them removable. Each piece just rests on his head, but they fit nice and firm so they stay on, even if you shake him a bit. Unfortunately though, probably because of the snug fit and the added fact that the hat had been sitting on him for so long in the package, mine has a thin black streak running across the back of his skull, and it won't go away with a simple spit rub. With the hat and glasses removed, we get a superb head sculpt and every wrinkle has been added, making the resemblance to Brian Cranston uncanny. I'm simply astounded to the attention to detail afforded to this figure. Now to the two, three huge glaring issues. First, he's completely static, featuring absolutely no articulation points. I was hoping for a few basic points to move him a little, but no, nothing. Secondly, he can't stand on his own. Really? He's in a pose where he should be able to balance, but he's not, so I have to assist him with a figure stand. And thirdly, is that even a word? The gun he's holding is non-removable. Come on, for the $18 price point, they couldn't have at least given us an interchangeable hand? However, because of the fantastic sculpt and the fact that he's not a character that necessitates the ability for action poses, I can kind of overlook this. Included with Walter are a pair of accessories. First up is a duffel bag full of money. It's made of a black plastic and nicely detailed, but the shoulder strap is molded in that drooped position. The handle, though, is able to hang from his open hand, but that's about your only option if you don't want it to sit next to him. Also packed in, but hidden behind the blister label, and understandably so, is a bag of meth. Yes, you heard right, a bag of meth. It's cast in a translucent blue, and I can definitely see the details to it if you look hard, but the addition of some extra paint, even a basic wash, would have helped bring out the sculpt more. On the side is a small indentation so you can hook it to Walt's open hand, but it more so hangs there than actually holds it so it can be a pain sometimes. The idea that I have an awesome looking figure in my collection that comes with drugs is well worth the price I paid. That said, I have the aid of Hal and the Green Lantern Corps to keep my collection of impressionable youth clean. Your drug peddling kind isn't welcome here, which is why he'll be isolated from everyone else.